This channel is supported by my online fishing courses, and you can learn more at saltstrong.com slash Skinner. And I'm proud to announce my fifth book will be out mid-November 2022. Yeah, so you know, this is by far my favorite time of the year, October, going out in the kayak on the sound, and uh, I'm, I'm looking at birds ahead. I'm, all right, so I'm going to go for blackfish, but almost always I'm going to see some albies pop up. There could be stripers, and although this is my favorite fishing, I haven't been able to do much of it because of the storm that hit Florida and uh, really messed with my uh, winter home, and I've had to go down there uh, once I'm going to have to go right back down but uh, it could have been much worse and it was much worse for a lot of people. So, all right, mixed bag, but primarily blackfish. Right now, I am just gonna be happy to be on the water and doing some fishing because I haven't been able to do that in a couple of weeks. So we'll see what happens. I'm washing these because they sat in the garage overnight. If you don't do that, burn your fingers. All right, I'm going to start on a rock that I've not really fished much before. I, there's boats on uh, where I want to fish, which isn't surprising. So I'm just going to sneak up on this rock and really close to the beach here. Try not to hit it. It's a big one. Wow, it's a big rock. Holy smokes. God, that water is clear. You look over. Well, I can see fish down there. <laughs> okay, this is October 15th. I'm in 17 feet of water. It's 64 degree water. A rock that I haven't fished much before, uh, but you know, testing stuff, looking around a little bit. And uh, hey, I'm going to find a great rock on this trip. So. All right, I'll have links to all of the gear in the video description. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. And I'm uh, spot locked with the trolling motor. It's just so convenient. Pull up, hit a button, and uh, you're there. Okay, this is Eastern Long Island. My limit is 16 inches, three fish, but I'm not keeping anything. This is a pure catch and release trip. Okay, the crab jig is a three-quarter ounce SNS Skinner jig. Um, as always, you got to wait through these little bites in the beginning. You get a million little taps. You're waiting for something to pick it up, swim away. You want steady movement before setting the hook, and we'll take a look at why that is in a second. All right, I sat on this rock for about 20 minutes, and this is what I was pulling, uh, smalls, but hey, it's what you got to do. You, know, you got to check stuff out, so I'm going to move on. So I mentioned the need to wade through those little bites, and this is why. Um, this is what goes on underneath the boat. You, you drop that jig down, you feel taps, you think there's a fish, but there's actually like <laughs> 20 fish, and pretty much most of them you don't want to catch. Um, you've got to wade it out wait for that larger blackfish to go in there, pick it up, swim it away, um, and, and then set the hook. So it's just amazing how, how much life is down there. And uh, this, this fishing is covered thoroughly uh, in the new book that will come out about a month after this is published. And uh, it will cover black fishing from shore boat and kayak, among many other things. And the new book also includes albie fishing. And there they are, right in front of me. Uh, oh, they can be picky. Come on, look at that. Oh, come on, right through them. Okay, just one blow up on the lure. You know, I could see the bait is like the, the size of hair. Okay, here's some more. 
but the key here is the fish finder because as I'm going at these albies, I spot a rock that I, I'm not aware of and I take a mark on it and that is going to set the stage for this whole trip. And as everybody who albie fishes knows, uh, yeah, these things can just be picky and just, just not hit. And uh, yeah, that's what they're doing. But I'm going to circle back on that rock. All right, if you watch the fish finder, you can, you're going to see it on there. And uh, what caught my eye was that it seemed like there wasn't just one rock. It was like just the way it echoed in there. It looked like there was more. And I can tell you from diving, that's what you want. Um, sometimes the single rocks are good, but if you can get a couple of them close together, those are usually the best spots. So this looks pretty good to me. Um, I'm just going to try it. That's the way this is. You, you mark stuff, you try it, and... Um, sometimes it works out. Oh, the beauty here, as soon as I saw what I wanted, I just hit spot lock on the remote, and you saw that thing, like, just jerk back, and uh, now it's going to lock me right on there, and uh, going to start dropping crabs on it. Okay, and here's a look at how I'm hooking this on there, just pretty much uh, in a leg socket, out another one. Uh, at some times, I'm going to use uh, whole crabs, the smaller greens on this, and uh, I'm going to try a couple different things. You know, one of the most important things in this fishing is right here, when you're dropping. Um, you want to look for that float in the line when you hit bottom, and then there it is. See, it just it stopped. And then you want to have contact but not pressure. And that's, you need a sensitive rod. I'll talk about that in a second. And when it moves, there you go. All right, just a small, but um, you know, I'm just starting on this rock. It's a complete unknown to me. Didn't know it was there until I ran over it. Um, and I'm just going to keep working on it. And I'm in 25 feet of water now. So finally, a, a legal one anyway. That's a nice one. Not keeping anything today. No time to clean fish, cook fish. Ordering pizza out is the way to go tonight. So I decided to put a, a big chunk of crab on there. And uh, yeah, that, that can be a little tough to hook them, but I just wanted to throw something different down. Uh, yeah, I got the one keeper and a bunch of shorts. Um, the shorts are on it so fast. So I just want to give them a, a bigger meal. And boy, this is going to pay off. The key to this is the thin braided line. I prefer 15 pound test. Also, you need a sensitive rod. You need to be able to distinguish between those little taps and the blackfish. Uh, this is actually a prototype, but it's a final prototype. This rod is now being made. It's just it's not on the mark yet. It's a Skinner rod um, through J and H Tackle, another dark matter rod, really targeted towards uh, light fluke jigging, snap jigging, and blackfish. Thank you. 
Well, that's definitely a keeper. So I'm getting a few here now. Just took a little time. Look at that fish finder. Hey, the big piece of crab got a bigger fish. So let's put on a giant piece of crab and see what that's going to do. Now, they'll, they'll definitely be a little harder to hook. And yeah, it's going to take a little time to get to the bottom with only a three quarter ounce jig. But the current's pretty light right now, so uh, I can get away with it. He's going to cut you off on that rock. Serious freaking blackfish. And that was with that big giant piece of crab on there. Wow, fight. Whoa, there's a lot of weight there. Hmm. That's a beauty. So even if I was keeping fish on this trip, I would not have kept that one. Uh, they're slow growers, and uh, I'd definitely rather put those bigger ones back. So a lot of times when I buy green crabs, I get a lot of these smaller ones. They're great. Uh, you can just put them on the hook hole. And yeah, after catching that, th those two larger ones on uh, big chunks of crab, I'm definitely switching over using uh, the small hole crabs. And yeah, I'll usually like uh, cut a piece off just to get the juices flowing. But hey, those fish are down there. Uh, I don't need to attract anything. As soon as they see it go down, they're going to be on it.
I want to try another rock, but it's hard to do when they're hitting well here. It seems a little silly to leave this. Whoop, 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 watch the prop there. Definitely a good one there. Yeah. Yeah, how can you leave this? Here's a good one. Now, one of my favorite things about anchoring with the trolling motor is this here. You know, the wind just shifted, turned it around. If I'd been on anchor, it would have taken me off the spot. But no, yeah, you know, it's going to keep you right where you are. And uh, here we go. Oh, yeah, come on. Uh, so that turned out to be a great trip, and the best thing for me was it was on a rock that I didn't even know existed uh, prior to this. Hey, there's rocks all over. You just got to test them. Sometimes you hit a good one, and uh, that was the case. All right, if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. And check out my online courses at saltstrong.com Skinner.